Hi everyone, we are back, and one of the cool things that you can look up in Mathematica is, uh, let's do mass transport PD, here we go. Um, you could look up these suites that are built into Mathematica that help you solve different types of typical engineering um, and kind of these, some of these uh, basically mass transport, not mass trans transport necessarily, but um, these engineering basically problems where you're dealing with PDEs and trying to solve essentially for these values. Um, so actually you can see here that you've got um, acoustic PDE, you know, heat transfer PDE components. Um, we'll look at mass transport as well. You can look and then basically see and solve and actually go through a little tutorial here. So you can see here tutorial for mass transport. So if you want to look at diffusion, if you want to look at um, some fluid flow ideas as well. So for example, you can see some different types of basically chemical diffusion problems, concentration fields as a function of time. So very, very, very similar um, types of problems and types of, you know, basically uh, equations that you can kind of solve. So these are all uh, really, really, really cool. Um, they're, they allow you to specify essentially boundary conditions, initial conditions. You can solve essentially these PP, uh, PDEs and ODEs. They are set up and then you can make essentially these dynamic plots as well. So you have mass transfer. We have heat transfer that we're going to get into in a second. You have solid mechanics. Um, solid mechanics is actually a very, very interesting um, you know, tutorial essentially that you can go through. Um, you can analyze stresses and beams. You can look at you know, the deformation of materials. and um, You can actually do quite a bit um, looking at essentially stresses, frequency responses. Um, you can look at you know, anisotropic materials, as you can see here. Um, so there's quite a bit that can be done. Um, you can look at thermal strain and how does that vary. Um, and yeah, you can start to solve a lot of these different problems. So um, it's a fun suite of tools to look at, uh, lots to work with. Uh, and so we're going to have fun doing this. But one of the models that we're going to look at today is basically um, we're going to look at components in this heat transfer kind of tutorial effectively. So how do we utilize essentially these heat transfer equations generally? How do we specify variables, boundary conditions, all that good stuff? And then how do we start to model and basically look at some heat transfer problems. So we'll be using a lot of those values that, or a lot of those tutorials in Mathematica. So what are some typical boundary conditions that we can look at for heat transfer? You could have fixed, tur fixed surface temperature boundary condition. You can specify a specific heat flux. You can specify here a heat flux with a value of zero. You can specify a boundary condition where you're symmetric, meaning that your, as you can see here, that your slope here is going to be effectively equal to zero. So these are very similar mathematically, but different in terms of how you apply them. Um, you could have, basically, this is our convection, convective boundary condition. So when you're looking at heat transfer, you're looking at conduction, convection, radiation, hence your radiation boundary condition. Um, so you could do and look at quite a bit of this here. Um, so let's look at a specific, a specific example. So here we have, in this rectangle here, we have basically this left fixed temperature boundary conditions left and right. We have radiation, convection, all over here. So let's go ahead and get started. So how can we start to solve some of these problems? Um, you got periodic boundary conditions as well. That's very interesting, um, but for another topic, probably more for simulation, of course. Um, so here, I can specify thermal conductivities. I can specify my ambient temperature for my radiation and convection boundary conditions. So I can set here. These are my fixed temperatures at x equals 0, at x equals 0 0.02 in my little rectangular. I have a fixed surface temperature. I also have at the top here, y equals 0, 0, our heat transfer coefficient. Um, I also have basically a radiation boundary condition. And here you can see I'm setting up my PDE, heat transfer PDE with my variables, with my parameters. See here, here. So we're looking at a steady state solution, not a time dependent solution here. Um, so, hence, no initial conditions. Um, and then we can go ahead and start to solve our problem. So, solve, we're applying it over here. You can replace this basically with, um, so for example, x goes from 0 to 0 0.02. And you can go from y goes from 0 to 0 0.01. Oops, you can set that up here. Oh, why does it like this? this set that in there and desolve and then we've got it so this is our steady state solution 
you could probably get away with, um, for example, I can probably just put T in here. Uh, let's see what happens. We can set a variable here. We can set this. We can set this. We can set this. And then we're going to say basically I C equals basically we can set my temperature at time t equals zero. And the equal, let's just say that it's initially at, um, let's say, 273, room temperature. Excuse that. So we can set this. We can probably, let's see if we can fit this in here. Let's see. So we'll have to actually put our initial condition in here, but we can do that a little bit later. Uh, and we can actually solve, ND solve EDE. Let's put in our IC, and then we can actually solve this here. And actually, we can solve this. Here's this. T goes from, let's just go from zero to 100. Yeah, we're gonna have to, yeah, we're going to have to do some work on this. But anyways, um, this would be your basically steady state solution. So you can do lots of different types of problems. So we can do basically a problem like this, where we're looking at heat transfer with some type of volumetric um, heat source. So basically some heating element, a volume element within essentially my system. Um, and again, you can specify uh, all your different types of boundary conditions here. We're specifying initial condition of zero. We're looking, um, as you can see here, volume... Uh, let's see what our, we can look at our parameters here, thermal conductivity, and we can kind of specify basically some heat source uh, values here. So this is working, let's let it do its job, uh, and then we can go ahead and start to solve through here. Actually, here's how we can do Should we do an empty solve value? Ah, I think that was our mistake up here. We needed... I think a T comma X and Y. So sorry, I'm gonna go back up here because I'm interested to see if this works. It looks like it will. Let's give this a little bit of time to run. And then you can see your heat source here. So this is pretty just a volumetric heat source, um, and it's basically telling you we're only looking at that heat source increasing, so you can see the temperature distribution as you may expect. Ooh, my computer's heating up. Let's go back to this pre previous problem. This is our steady state solution. We can also look at it like this. Uh, we can do plot 3D. We can do T function from T, X, Y. We can plot from X from 0 to 0, 0 power 2. I can plot from y from 0 to 0 0.01. So we can do this for one time. And I could do now, let's do plot 3D, let's do uh, color function temperature map. And then we can do, we can specify some boundary conditions or something. start to play around with that distribution. Again, that goes pretty quick. Um, so <laughs> maybe we went from 0 to 5. So we can kind of set this up, move, and basically see how it distributes there. Um, instead of a plot 3D, you could do a color plot. So you can see that and how it evolves. Actually, we could do a plot range. Color function, you can do... Here, 
and we can start to see. I should be able to make those quick. We can look at. Um, let's see. What we can do for here. But yeah, you can see that solution here. That's a little bit better. A little bit better scaling here. Actually, we'll just do that. So, for example, we can see, and voila, it starts to match essentially our intuition here. Actually, your steady state solution. So, very similar. So, pretty cool. So, you can do again volumetric heat source, you could do a layered heat source. So again, you can actually choose the mesh in here, and actually that's really, really cool. Um, so you could do basically FEM, finite element solutions. Um, oops, there's a little bit of an error here. So we can specify and actually see our mesh. But we need our ND solve. One second here. Let's go ahead and import the evaluation. So for example, let's get this guy, let's get here. Subscripts, let's get this. So let's see, what does it look like? I think we're looking, I'm missing one. Let's clear our notebook here. We've got our mesh okay, we've got this okay. Everything's looking. TN, let's just make that. What is it? Ah, we need variables. So we need our variables from the previous problem. So let's get our bars. Let's get our variables over here. Now it is. Oops. Let's get our. Hmm, interesting. We'll have to look up where we're going wrong a little bit in this line of code here. But we definitely need our variables, we need our subscripts here. Eventually, we're going to get our basic solution. You can do point sources as well. So there's again, there's lots of different um, solutions that you can look for while this is running um, in the problem. So, but just like we saw in the previous one, you can kind of go through and so essentially solve some of these heat transfer problems. And again, it's all about specifying your boundary conditions. So here we're looking at again, as you can see here, this layered heat source. There's a little bit of an error here in this um, function, but um, you could do point source. So we can look at point source solution here and you can see as this function changes we're heating up. So very similar to the you know volumetric you know solution as well. You can also do an anisotropic heat transfer as well. This is pretty cool. Um, you can see here that I in my parameters I have different thermal conductivities set for different directions. Um, so you can see here that my thermal conductivity is higher in the y, um, basically in the x and in the y, and we can see that reflected essentially in this heat transfer. So heat's faster in the x than in the y direction. So really, really cool, um, actually very, very, very cool um, solution here um, for our problem. Um, so you can also do heat transfer with phase changes. So you could specify essentially um, a phase change in material, calculate that enthalpy of fusion absorbed or released. Um, and you can have fixed, you know, heat flux values, but you can also basically build that in here. So you can see here your solution without latent heat and with latent heat. Why is latent heat lower? Because we're absorbing energy as we undergo that phase change. So really, really, really cool um, 
actually very quite as is a really cool um, essentially problem that you're working with here. So here you're looking at phase change, you're looking at different values, ice, water, effectively, um, looking at these ratios, building it through, again, calculating that, you know, uh, is going to heat flux here that's uh, occurring at that location um, and then solving the problem. So very, very cool, very, very nice. You can do similar things with phase changes in diffusion, which is what we're going to get into next time. So thanks, and I'll see you in the next video. And thank you for being patient um, as we work through some of the bugs. But that's the fun part. See you next video. Bye.